I'm in my pink shirt again. It's a very old shirt. It's a little crusty, but it's the only pink item that I have in my closet. We're gonna talk about girly things. We're gonna talk about the TikTok aesthetic celebrating hyper femininity. Femininity? Femin- Femininity. My name is Teresa, and this... What is this? This is Coquette. What is Coquette? Just as the name describes, a woman who flirts. It's a new romantic aesthetic that embodies all things idyllic and feminine. Lace blouses, lace camis, frilly socks paired with chunky boots or platforms, lots of pink, lots of gold and pearl details, heart-shaped everything, frills galore, a mixture of the 2014 soft grunge tumbler period, which I am very familiar with, ballet core, and the effortless messy French girl look. Channels past time periods such as the Regency era, the Victorian era, Edwardian era, any era you wear a lacy cami with a corset and kind of blends it in a modern day edgy way. So let's get into the meat and the potatoes. What wardrobe essentials do you need to dress coquette? You need a pointel. What is a pointel knit? I don't know. Give me a moment. Editing magic. The pointel knit a double knit fabric with a texture that makes it look like lace with a little bit of zigzag, very hyper feminine. Perfect for the coquette aesthetic. Dresses with frilly details, maybe a large Peter Pan collar, some ruffles at the hem, ruffles at the sleeves, eyelet lace. That's what you want on your body as a, a girl who flirts. And then we get a little sensual. Just wear a corset, a corset over your blouse. Maybe you have a puffy sleeve blouse made of satin. The coquette lady is not above dressing in bloomers, but wearing bloomers as pants. Hyper femininity. It's not something that I want to do. I've been there, done that. I, during my twee era with my frilly little dresses that I bought at the discount junior section. I think that's it for me. One of the reasons why I wouldn't seek out dressing coquette because of my age. I think it's really cute on someone who is younger, teenagers, early 20 something year olds, maybe even late 20 something year olds. Once you surpass 30, it gets a little fishy because when you start dressing like a flirtatious little girl, like a doll, like a nymphette, it looks like you're you're desperately trying to cling on to your youth. For some reason, in the coquette aesthetic, there's a juxtaposition between creams and pale pastel pinks and a big chunky black platform or a big chunky Doc Martin. You're a sweet cherry soda in the summer, Lolita-esque pearl wearing gal. At the same time, if somebody messes with you, you could easily put a boot up their ass. That's the American way. You definitely want one of those chemises. It's kind of like you're wearing a Victorian lady's underclothes, which is very sexy. The entire aesthetic is like you're sexy, but you don't know you're sexy. You're sexy in an innocent, virginal way. It's like you are a Victorian lady and usually you would wear like a stern black dress, buttoned up, high collared, stiff, tight sleeves, buttons all the way, and then for the coquette look, you take off that dress, just strip down. Do you have a corset cream, cream corset, and you have your chemise, your underclothes, and your roughly bloomers. Basically, that's the look. Maybe you keep your Victorian witch shoes on, sensible heels on, but maybe you want to swap them out for some Doc Martin boots. And usually with your camisole top, you want it to be sexy, but innocent. You know, it's kind of like what you wear to your honeymoon as a virgin. If you could just imagine your husband taking off your corset one eye hook at a time and then you have the cami and that's what you wear out on the street in modern day. Not like back then. I mean, I think you would cause a riot back in the Victorian times if you were to go around thoroughfare with your cami on and only your cami on. You would stop traffic. Every man driving a horse-drawn hackney would go, whoa, Nelly. And there be accidents. They would probably run over a pedestrian and maybe that pedestrian's you. In any event, you want your cami to be cute and I foresee a baby blue ribbon threaded through the top of your cami. And that's what your handsome Victorian husband would uh, loosen up 
But because you're a modest lady, you always have a cardigan on hand, a girly cardigan. You wanna keep your colors in the pastel spectrum. The entire coquette aesthetic is basically the opposite of the color palette of dark academia. I used to work in customer service. I met this lady. She was about 50 plus years old. She dressed very coquette. She was wearing a baby doll dress. And when she bent over to pick something up, she flashed us her underwear. Her underwear was very ruffly, lots of ruffles, baby pink. It's been a long time since she had been a baby, let me tell you. There was a black bow on it. The bow, it was like presenting itself as a present for somebody to unwrap. Charm bracelets. Charm bracelets with cutesy little trinkets is a must. You need something with a pearl on it. Lately, I've discovered the designer Simone Rocha. Her entire catalog, her designs, is very coquette to me. It's baby pink, it's shimmery. She's got this handbag that is basically a giant pearl. She's got huge platforms. Her entire look reminds me of baby doll meets Spanish. Spanish Inquisition. She has elaborate Spanish looking headpieces, leather corsets paired with baby pinks that contrast between soft and feminine and frilly and dark and gothic, high-end gothic Lolita. Pearls and lacy corset tops is the number one thing I see in this aesthetic. Pink pearls shaped like hearts, heart-shaped motifs, tote bags with lipstick kisses all over it, letters with lipstick kisses all over it, heart shaped mirrors, floral patterns, lots of doilies, strawberry motifs, lots of Jane Austen references because that is hyper feminine. You might even want to go back to the Regency dress days. I see seashells, Prince of Cupids, Prince of Little Lambs, very saccharine. It's very sweet. Heart shaped sunglasses, white frilly socks that you would pair with Doc Martens for that edgy feminine contrast. You do your nails in pale pink. Be with details of little red hearts on it. It's permanently Valentine's Day for you. As for media, the number one thing that comes to mind is anything by Sofia Coppola. Queen of visuals, Marie Antoinette, the most hyper feminine movie I've ever seen. Lots of lace, lots of corsets, lots of camis with the blue ribbon woven. Ooh, white stockings with blue ribbon garters and shoes. My God, the shoes. And then we have The Beguiled, which is a movie that nobody really talks about, but I think it's like Virgin Suicide during the Civil War. Everybody was in white dresses, corsets. And since Coquette is a first cousin of ballet corps, you gotta, you gotta throw in Black Swan. And since we're in the subject of Sofia Coppola and Black Swan and anything visually scrumptious and appealing, we've gotta mention the other first cousin, 2014 soft grunge Tumblr, in which Sofia Coppola movies and Black Swan and Lana Del Rey were heavily featured in what do we have on there? We have stills and captions from Lana Del Rey music videos. The 1997 remake of Lolita with Jeremy Irons as Humpert Humpert and Dominic Swan. That movie alone produced so many visuals, so many gifts, because it's like the most aesthetic movie ever. Look at her clothes. Like it embodies the coquette aesthetic, the celebration of nostalgia, of youthfulness, of summer, of pastels and candles candy colors, nostalgic summer fashion. However, the styles celebrating youthfulness, doll-like youthfulness, the Lolita, the Nymphette has negative connotations. You know, you know, I don't have to get into it. So this girlish Nymphette Lolita aesthetic from the mid 2010s Tumblr era is having another moment on TikTok, but it's gone through a reinvention, a Gen Z lens. That's what I see a lot. Aesthetics that existed before for Gen X, for the millennials, but Gen Z is doing it again. So we're celebrating the many shades of feminine beauty. We're celebrating innocence, but we're not, we're not sexualizing it. So what does the coquette girl do? do. She's cute. She's hyper feminine. I would hope she's comfortable. Comfort means different things to different people. Some people are very, very comfortable in a corset. I will not be. I can no longer abide underwire bras. So for most of my adult life, I wore bras with underwire. And now I've decided to free myself, gotten rid of the underwires. Now I just wear unwired bras and I like it. So I don't know if I can ever do a corset. I don't like to be strapped in like that. I like to be freed. Hyper femininity.
it's fun. When you're in your early 20s, maybe mid 20s, and you're trying to recapture your youth, you could still pull it off. But once you reach a certain age, it starts to look like you're very desperate. You're very desperate to cling on to your last shreds of youth. And it also reminds me of the movie starring Joan Crawford and Betty Davis, What Happened to Baby Jane. Betty Davis played Baby Jane. She was like a child celebrity known for her precociousness, for her cuteness. She was like a Shirley Temple esque character, even as she aged, and she was still dressed like she was a little doll, put her hair up in ringlets. She wore ruffled baby doll dresses, lacy details, and then she caked on the makeup and it was very horrifying. And that's what I think of when I think of coquettes after a certain age. Of course, nobody is going to stop you from dressing any way you like at whatever age. I am not the fashion police, obviously. I have this crusty shirt. When I'm an old lady, no doubt I will become very old. For some reason, I foresee myself living till I'm like, like 120. I don't want to. I don't want to live till I'm 120, but I foresee myself getting very old, very tiny, very shriveled. Just keep on going as the world burns around me. I see myself wearing very minimal Japanese inspired dystopian clothing. A minimal black blouse without any details whatsoever. I don't even know if I want to show a button. I think it'll get me another 50, 60, 100 years, whatever. To be honest, I think I'm going to live forever. I'm gonna be incredibly old and wizen. I don't enjoy that. I don't wanna live forever. I wanna live long enough to enjoy life, then die. Short video, short but sweet and frilly. And if you enjoyed it, please do give this video a thumbs up. It would really help me out with the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed already, please, I would love to see you on a regular basis. Good night and good luck.